Hello and welcome to my channel. I just returned from the Philippines and I want to share with you my three weeks itinerary. Bear in mind, this is not a guide, a travel guide, but it's just my experience to help you out in deciding what you want to do and what you don't want to do when you go to the Philippines. Also, hopefully the video is going to help you in avoiding the same mistakes I have made. Let's go briefly through the destinations I've been to and in other videos I will break them down in more detail. So stay tuned and subscribe to the channel. In total, I stayed in the Philippines for 21 days. I left from London on the 9th of November 2023 and returned to London on the 1st of December of the same year. I'm just breaking it down day by day, okay? So I landed in Manila in night time. That was the first day and there was not much time to do anything but had a Burger King, I know, right? I didn't know where to go. I was staying around Rizal Park, which is where the USA Embassy is. And maybe I do recommendations in another video, but if you want to stay somewhere, stay in Makati, which is one of the nicest areas of Manila. By the way, the area where I was staying in Rizal Park, it's kind of handy because you reach Intramuros very quickly, which is the old Spanish town. And that's the place where I would spend my time if I was you. Day two, I stayed in Manila and I did some vlogging. You can check the vlog up here, taking some photography in the city. I went to Intramuros and that's where I had my lunch as well at Barbara's, which is a heritage restaurant with some live music, quite entertaining and really good buffet. I wanted to go to have dinner in a rooftop restaurant called Sky Deck View Bar, which was fully booked. So the restaurant is part of the Bay Leaf Hotel. Bear in mind, if you want to go there, book in advance. So I had a pizza in the restaurant just underneath that floor in the same hotel and I had a drink upstairs at the Bay Leaf rooftop because some tables got free. After a drink I went home again to have a rest. The day after same thing I just walked around Intramuros because I didn't know what to do. So here my quick advice is don't spend too much time in Manila maybe one day if so and go straight to your islands. This third night in Manila though I went back to Barbara's Heritage Restaurant and there were some traditional dancing in there, so it was really good fun to uh, be entertained by those cultural events. On day fourth, I was still in Manila and I went to my first destination on the island of Palawan, which was Puerto Princesa. I had my flight at around 1.30 in the afternoon and the flight itself was one hour and a half. As soon as I arrived, I checked in in my hotel accommodation and uh, I had dinner at the Bay Walk of Puerto Princesa. There's not much going on there, but there's a few nice restaurants with a lot of local people, so it's nice to uh, be part of the community as well. Food was good. In terms of party, I'm not a party person, so I can't really recommend, but there's a tiki bar, which apparently that's where the tourists go, and it's really good in terms of vibes. Day five, all day in terms of adventures, and activities. Here I woke up quite early when seven o'clock I was picked up from my accommodation by a van to join the underground river tour in Puerto Princesa. From my accommodation in Puerto Princesa we drove 1.5 hours to reach the underground river which is amazing so that's something definitely I would recommend. It's one of my top five things I've done this year in the Philippines. Nature wise is stunning. The cave inside the underground river is literally to be seen. I booked this store together with a firefly tour in the evening through getyourguide.com. The first part of the tour was the underground tour in the morning and the second part of the package was in the evening. So in between I had a lot of time but luckily I joined this group which was also doing the zip line next to the underground river and the mangroves tour. So I joined both tours as well on the day. I just talked to my guide and said, hey, can I join the other guys doing the activities? I paid on spot and that was it. So Puerto Princesa, one full day for these activities and go. Day number six, that was a nightmare of a, of a day. So I had to travel from Puerto Princesa to El Nido and one of the ways is to get a van 
Again, you joined a group of people, they pick you up from your accommodation and you drive for six hours to El Nido. Finally, we arrived in El Nido at late afternoon, so another day was gone traveling. El Nido is definitely more developed for tourism. There's a lot of foreigners in, investing in businesses there, so you can find cuisines from all over the world. But bear in mind, the prices are also Western prices for food, drinks, whatever. I stayed in El Nido three nights at the beach house. Very handy because it's in the center of the main road, also literally on the beach where all the tours in the morning are departing from. So my first day, which was the number seven in El Nido, was uh, involving also the hike to Mount Tarao, which is over the bay of El Nido. Now, bear in mind, this is now illegal. So I was following this guy journey era on his website and I'm gonna give you more details about the waterfalls in Cebu he was talking about because a lot of stuff changed there so stay tuned once again but Mount Tarao is now illegal because someone uh, died basically so they closed it down there's something else you can visit which is a bit lower I think still on the peaks but it's all organized and it's called the Via Ferrata Canopy Walk so on this morning I joined the tour A which I booked previously a few weeks before going to the Philippines through the Viajeros Travels and Tours. I paid 1,200 pesos for Tour A. That was quite good fun. The things with this tour is that they could change the destinations according to the weather conditions. So on our day, the, the sea was a bit wavy, a bit windy, so unfortunately we had to change some of them as well. But we did the big lagoon, we did kayaking inside the big lagoon, which was uh, good fun. We also visited the secret lagoons, and I'm sorry here guys, but everything seems to be secret in the Philippines, and hidden lagoons, secret beaches, so I'm very confused with the names. But yeah, we visited the secret lagoons and we did some snorkeling just around the corner but again the sea was quite wa wavy we couldn't really see uh, under the sea and uh, yeah not a great experience there and then we also had lunch on Ipil beach which was actually very beautiful and the sea was stunning there the last destination of the tour was the seven commandos beach and that was quite good fun because the beach is actually pretty and we had a beach volley match with some of the local people so it was a good way to end the day. We returned to El Nido and here I had some dinner at Basil's Pizzeria right in front of my accommodation, basically really nice pizza. If you want to have a nice drink and talk to people, go to Sip Sunset Lounge and Bar. My day number eight, I joined the Tour C, which I actually have booked the day before when I finished my Tour A. There are so many tour operators there, you can book your tours the day before or a few hours before the departure, I guess. I paid 1,200 pesos, same as the Tour A. And one of my advice here, and this is against my channel, but don't watch too many videos, guys, because my expectations were so high because I were watching the best videos out there with the best weather, the best destinations. And when you actually get there, maybe there's not sun in the sky and everything is completely different. So some of the places we have seen, I was like, eh, is that? what I've seen before. So keep that in mind if you're watching a lot of these vlogs. Social media and reality, two different things. And we'll talk about it at the end of this video. So here, our tour, we're including the helicopter island, which we didn't visit due to weather conditions. We went to the secret beach. Also, the tour should have included Martin Lock Shrine, which we didn't see. But we also saw the hidden beach and, the, and we did some snorkeling at the Star Beach, which was really, really beautiful. Then for dinner, I joined one of the guys from the tour at Art Cafe restaurant, which is nice, again, with some live music. I had some fish and lemon sauce, which was delicious. If you're into clubbing, go to Amigos, which is packed with people right there. Day nine, 10 and 11, this was by far the best thing I have done in three weeks in the Philippines, which was to join a boat tour of three days from El Nido to Coron. Amazing people, you just travel from El Nido to Coron in three days, you stay overnight on two different islands in tiny sheds made of uh, leaves, I think from banana trees or whatever. The adventure itself is amazing. You see beautiful places, eat 
delicious food made from the chef freshly on the boat. I mean, it was great. There was a fire dancer as well in one of the, on one of the islands for one night and we did some karaoke in the evening. You're just gonna enjoy it. It's my recommendation if you go to the Philippines. And that's the best way probably to travel from El Nido to Coron, in my opinion. Also, bear in mind, you're not the only boat going to this destination, so you might see the people you have met the previous days as well on the same island and you play volleyball together again. You keep seeing each other until the end of your journey, which is great. I can't really remember all the destinations we have seen in three days, but I'm gonna put here a screenshot with the names and the spots we have seen. By the way, this tour was organized by El Nido Paradise Tour Operator. Day number 11, I arrived in Coron with the tour, with the boat in, at the late afternoon around 4.30. I think I stayed in Coron for days and I found Coron probably the busiest place in terms of tours and boat and island open tours. Really a lot of boats in any destination we went to. I stayed four nights at the Divine Castle Traveler Inn. It's a nice location, nothing really special in terms of the place itself, but five minutes walk from the main road with all the restaurants and bars. So it was quite late. I just had a walk in town and went to the Kawayanan Grill Station, which is a Filipino restaurant. I spent 700 pesos for a nice meal. I didn't really see any club there in uh, Coron, but there's a nice bar called Bam Bar with again, live music and a bit of karaoke. A lot of foreigners go there and it's nice vibes. And the nightlife definitely seems to end earlier than in El Nido from what I've seen. If you want to see something local, go at the end of the road and check out the basketball court. A lot of people playing basketball in the evening. I really enjoy sitting down and just watch them play or you can actually join them and play. Day number 12 for me was exploring around Coron. I hired a scooter and went to Marsilla Beach, which is actually a fisherman beach. There was no one there apart from a couple of boats of fishermen and that was it. Also, it was quite late in the afternoon when I went because I relaxed a little bit in the day and the road was quite dangerous because it goes off-road actually for most of the journey. So if you want to go there, be careful. It could be muddy and slippery. You want to wear your helmet and be very, very careful. But the journey itself was actually amazing. The beach was okay, but the journey, that's what I love to do when I travel. Hire a scooter and explore. That's when you see how the people actually live. And that's what happened here. I went through a lot of local villages, a lot of kids playing around. You know, everyone is saying hello. You, I saw the monkeys crossing literally in front of my scooter. That's the kind of experiences I love to have when I travel. I went back to town and went to the same Filipino restaurant I went the previous night. Day 13, with some of the guys from the three days tour, we actually joined the ultimate tour, including Kayalangan Lake, CYC Beach Snorkeling, Twin Lagoon, Barracuda Lake. We did some snorkeling at the Seven Picados and some of the guys actually saw turtles there. We organized a private tour. It was seven of us, so small group, which is great. We spent 1,900 pesos each for this tour. We left in the morning, I think around 10, and we came back quite late around 6 p.m. when it was already dark. I had a quick shower and then returned to the Bam Bar to have some dinner as well, because you can have some dinner there. It's basically a sharing space where different bars serve their own food. So it's great. You can pick what you want, have a drink and watch people singing. Tips, try the pork or beef ribs from one of the bars nearby. Day 14, I rent a scooter again from my accommodation and I went to Okam Okam Beach, which was recommended by my guide from the previous day. Again, there was no one there, not tourists, maybe two or three, just a few local people enjoying the beach. It's a very long beach. I tried to have a swim, but there was low tide, so I didn't really enjoy that. And I didn't stay very much. I just did a vlog and returned back with the scooter. The entrance fee here was a few pesos, I think 20 pesos or so. So I got my scooter. I got caught up in a storm 
literally was pouring down and it was getting quite cold as well. So I went to the Makinit Hot Springs. That's something definitely I could recommend in the evening time. Again, there's an entrance fee, parking fee, everywhere you go, you need to pay for the parking and the entrance fee nowadays. Okay, day 15, here I had to fly to Cebu. So from Koran, I flew to Cebu City. The flight is one hour. My tip here is to check your luggage because the restrictions are quite tight. The hand baggage was seven kilos and the cabin baggage was 10. So I had to move out a few things and carry, carry them with me, literally in my arms. So make sure you weigh your uh, suitcases. Otherwise you will have to pay 300 pesos for each extra kilo. When I arrived in Cebu City, I got a taxi straight away and moved to Molboal. It took me 3.5 hours and 3,000 pesos. But you can find all the taxis out of the airport, so easy to go. If you're using Grab, bear in mind, Grab is not working outside of Cebu City, so you will not find a way to reach Molboal with Grab. That's in 2023. I arrived in Molboal, checked in in my accommodation, and explore a little bit. I found a nice local restaurant again called Mills Restaurant, which was five minutes walk from my room. And I went there literally for three days in a row. Also, they have a laundrette. So if you need your, your washing done, go and ask them. On day 16, I booked a private tour, which I found out it was a private tour on the day to go to Kawasan Fall. So a guy with the car came to pick me up at four o'clock in the morning because we also went to Osmania Peaks. From Morboal, the drive to the Osmania Peaks is one hour and a half. It's a long journey on a very quite ugly road. Again, parts off road. The morning was promising well. Stars were out, so I said, okay, I'm gonna enjoy the peaks. And then it started to get foggy and a bit of rainy as well and really, ruined the day. That's my quick feedback on this experience. To me, the Osmania peaks were not worth waking up at four o'clock in the morning and spend that money to literally take one photo uh, with, a, with a kind of a nice view that you can see right here. That's my opinion. I leave it to you. We're going to talk about it in more details, maybe in a different blog. Quick fact as well, some of my neighbors at accommodation did the same, but in the, in the evening, and again, it was a very foggy day. They found a lot of fog. They bursted a tire as well and they couldn't come back. So they had a nightmare just to, yeah, to take a photo at the Osmania Peaks. After that, we drove to Cambais Falls, which is on the way more or less. And we just saw the first level. There's no entrance fee here. There's a couple of people living there, but they just let you in. And again, it wasn't worth it. I sent the drone to the next levels. I didn't really see anything special. So we left and we went to the Kawasan Falls. And here, the canyoneering experience, guys, you have to do it. Nature-wise is amazing. It's like being in Avatar or Jurassic Park. Literally, you are expecting a dinosaur to cross your way in a, at any moment. It is also great fun to do the canyoneering, jumping, you know, sliding and all that sort of things. For this adventure day, I paid 170 pound through getyourguide.com once again. And the canyoneering takes actually three hours. So we reached there in the morning at around 10.30. I did three hours canyoneering with a private guide. It was just him and me. We were also overtaking the other big groups and you just take your time because you're on your own. Also, the meal was included in the package. Then day 17, after the canyoneering, actually during the three day tour from El Nido to Coron, I think a lot of us got a virus or a bug or something. So I was really, really sick and it knocked me out for a couple of days. So on day 17, I had done nothing. I was literally in my room, I couldn't get up from the bed. Day 18, I was still a bit sick, but I had to move to from Morboal to Alegria. I chose Alegria because it's basically closer to all the waterfalls in Cebu or the main waterfalls in the south compared to Morboal. And there's nothing there, literally not tourism at all. I didn't see any foreigners apart from at the actual waterfalls. And it's very quiet. There's not nightlife. It's not developed for tourism yet. I stayed four nights at the Cocoville, 
which is a great place, very friendly as well, so definitely recommend it and check it out. From Mobile to Alegria, I hired a guy with a tricycle and I spent 700 pesos. The taxi more or less is double that or more, around 2,000 pesos, which is a lot of money. Also, there are buses going back and forth, which take maybe an hour or so. I arrived in Alegria quite early in the morning, so I didn't want to waste the day, and I hired a scooter and went straight to see Kankalanog Falls, which are tiny, again, to me, nothing special. It's quite deep, apparently you can, you know, you can dive and do jumps in the water, which I've done, but uh, the waterfall itself is nothing special, it's just a pond, <laughs> and that's it. The entrance was 50 pesos plus 30 pesos for the parking. On my way back to the accommodation, I stopped at Mainit Hot Springs. Now, I heard voices that the hot springs were actually closed, but I learned how not to trust people. So I got my scooter and drove there, and actually I found them open in the sense that there were construction sites there so the entrance wasn't there there was nothing or no one there i found my path i walked to the springs which are actually part of a river it's a tiny river of fresh and cold water and then in the river you will find a couple of ponds with really really hot water and here to be honest i could barely keep my feet in the water for a few seconds because the water is boiling hot I walked around and uh, I couldn't find anything special, to be honest. It was really dirty, a lot of rubbish around. I talked to a few local people that were sitting there and uh, that was it. So, in my humble opinion, this destination shouldn't be put on my list of things to see in Cebu. Again, from my experience. By the way, there was a parking fee sign at the entrance but again no one was there so i just parked my scooter and went through the path on day 19 i went to see dow falls and that's one of my recommendations again i paid 200 pesos for the entrance plus 20 pesos for the parking as a parking fee from the entrance the actual waterfall is around a 15 minutes walk they are big waterfalls just dropping down from the hill i was on my own and here the guide is mandatory. Actually, in all the waterfalls now, you need to get a guide. But the hike to the waterfall is beautiful. It's, it's magical. It's like being in a different world again. So recommend this waterfall for sure. After this, I went to the Inambakan waterfalls. I paid another 300 pesos plus 20 for the parking fees and 70 for the environmental fee. And from the entrance, you walk three minutes to reach the waterfalls, which again, are very, very nice. You can do some jumps once again, as you can see here. Not too many people, maybe five or six when I was there. So quite enjoyable. And bear in mind, only two levels out of seven are open to the public. So a lot of these waterfalls are having restrictions now and closing parts to the public. On my way back to Alegria, I stopped to have lunch, a late lunch, at Mary's Cocina, which I recommend. I put the link down here. I also tried to go to Kabutongan Waterfalls, which I was a bit late. It was 4 p.m. It was getting dark and uh, I left it actually. On day 20, I did some waterfall chasing once again and I started at Aginid Waterfalls, which I definitely recommend. It's a 45 minutes from where I was staying in Alegria, I paid 350 pesos for the entrance plus 20 pesos for the parking fee. And you basically go upstream. So you climb instead of coming down like the Kawasan Fall. It's great, guys. Check it out. The place is stunning and nature is just out of this world. It's actually very good fun. It can be quite scary because you literally climb some of the rocks. So. Uh, keep that in mind. My advice, my tip here is to bring a dry bag and leave at home all the bigger gear because you're getting soaked. You're actually in the water most of the time. So I had to leave back my drone, my bigger camera, and I just had the GoPro with me. Right after Aginid, we went to Binalayan Hidden Falls, which again, I recommend. It's a great place for photography as well. It's just stunning. We did some kind of scary jumps, actually. 
but yeah, I really enjoyed it. And it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And uh, we stayed there for a good hour and we saw another two, three tourists coming up. We paid 150 pesos for the entrance, plus some tips for the guides. From the entrance, the waterfalls are around 14 minutes, 15 minutes walk. At my return, again, I stopped at Mary's Cozina for some late lunch and then I was done. So I went just back to my accommodation. On day 21, I went to see Lambok Beach, which was close to Alegria. It was probably 20 minutes from my accommodation. I paid 50 pesos for the parking and that was it. I was on my own again, just a few local people. Once again, I didn't really find it special and in particular because of the weather and I'm going to talk about this. So I wasn't impressed. The sand was nothing special. There was low tide, so I couldn't even swim. It was full of stray dogs with full of poo of dogs as well. Not enjoyable. And I went there at 8 a.m. in the morning, but the weather wasn't great. It was gray. It started to rain again. At this point, I had another five days to spend in the Philippines and in particular, still in Cebu, I was going to go to Oslo and then spend one day in Cebu City and go back to Manila before my flight back to London. But on this day, I was so disappointed by everything and by the weather in particular, which made me decide, you know what, I'm going to go to the airport Cebu City and maybe go to Boracay. For another five days and enjoy white beach and i was hoping for the weather i checked the forecast it was giving rain for five days so there was no point in spending more money and going to another island and in my mind i just thought you know what i'm done i'm going back to london so on the same day on the way to the airport i booked another flight to come back to london and cut short the holiday for five or five days in particular because of the weather. Everything was gray, the water was not, you know, standing out, the colors were dead, and I just didn't enjoy it. It was very humid. In sunny days, everything is different. Probably November is not the best season. I won't go there again in November. I was before in the Philippines in end of December and January, and that was great. The sun was there, it was nice and hot and dry. But November failed and it made me want to go back earlier than expected. So that was my experience in three weeks in the Philippines. I hope the video helped you out somehow in deciding where you want to go. Hit subscribe because more content from there is coming out very soon. Okay, thanks for watching and see you shortly.